But what we have is a reservoir that's uh, 7,500 feet in depth and is 200 feet thick. So the reservoir is 7,300 feet at the shallowest location. Now this reservoir is, uh, is, is, doesn't have a dip angle, so it's pretty flat. The effects of gravity would be much more if it was at a dip angle and then the most shallowest part to the deepest part would be longer than 200 feet. But uh, the water oil contact line is 74, 75 feet, so, so not quite at the deepest part. The density of the brine and oleic phase are given. There is no gaseous phase in this problem. It could be gas dissolved in the oil, but no gaseous phase. The reservoir is normally pressured. Um, what does that mean? That means that we can um, calculate the pressure from the, the surface. Um, if it wasn't normally pressured, maybe you need data at a different location, like at the water contact, oil contact line. We have a capillary pressure model, which is given here. This normalized saturation is, is given by SW star. Capillary entry pressure is three and a half. PSI lambda is equal to two, and the residual water saturation is 0.2. So what I ask is to determine the initial pressure of both phases at the water oil contact line, as well as 25 feet above the water oil contact line. We'll do that by hand. Compute the phase saturations, so the SW and SO, at those two locations. Calculate something that's called the free water level. We'll, we'll discuss that in a moment. And then, um, well, really part D is what we're gonna do in Excel, which is to make some plots of the pressures and saturations as a function of depth. Any question about what we're doing here? So this is an initial condition. This is what the saturations and the pressures would be when you first drill your well. So this is a little bit of review, but um, you can kind of think of the reservoir as uh, being the picture on the left. So it's 1D, I mean obviously you might have multiple dimensions, but think of it in 1D. Water is more dense than oil usually, which is more dense than gas. The water zone uh, occurs below the water oil contact line. And below the water oil contact line, you're gonna have 100% water. So that's the blue over there. Then what you'll have is what's called a transition zone. I suspect you learned about transition zones in your petrophysics class, but because of capillary pressure, you won't go immediately from 100% water to 100% oil, right? It's not like you know, pouring water and oil into a cup and having all water at the bottom and all oil at the top. There'll be a little bit of a transition zone where you have both. Um, they're not really mixed, they're just, you know, they're, um, they're in the pore spaces and they're separated. Then if you go to shallower depths, then you're going to have all oil. And if you had a gas cap, and we don't in our problem, but if you had a gas cap, then there would be a gas oil transition zone and then gas at the top. And so what our goal is, is to determine the pressures of the water phase, oleic phase, and, and gaseous phase, if there is one, as well as the saturations as a function of depth. Uh, remember that this occurred through a drainage process. Oil migrated to the reservoir uh, via, you know, it, it, from a source rock, pushed out the water in the water wet porous medium, and that is drainage. Um, the capillary pressure, the water oil contact line, is determined from your capillary pressure curve. It is the capillary entry pressure. And remember that's that capillary pressure at 100% water saturation. Um, to reiterate, there's no oil below the water oil contact line and capillary pressure is calculated from the difference in pressures or densities. So, um, what we're gonna do is first calculate the water pressure and then the oil pressure as a function of depth. And that's gonna be related to the density. Then the difference between the water and oil pressures is the capillary pressure. Then we can use the capillary pressure to find the saturation. So at some location, we have the water oil contact line. That was given in the problem as 74, 75 feet. 
And then the oil pressure at the water oil contact line is equal to the water pressure plus the capillary entry pressure. Then what you do is you calculate water and oil pressure from the from the depths, okay? And and we'll we'll get to that next. Um, well, yeah. We'll, so so we'll do that. Let's. Um, I'll come back to the slides as we go along, but let's maybe just do this problem. So let's work together. And part A says determine the initial pressure of both phases at the water oil contact line. So what you really want to do is find the pressure of the water phase at the water oil contact line, and that's going to be given by gravity, right? So you have your atmospheric pressure, which is 14.7 psi. You're going to need the density of water and the depth, which is 74, 75 feet. Uh, watch your units, but um, calculate the aqueous phase pressure and the oleic phase pressure at the water oil contact line. Uh, don't do the 25 feet above the water oil contact line yet. We'll do that next. Reservoir is down here. This is D is equal to 7,500 feet. This is 200 feet thick. The water oil contact line is right over here. So that's D water oil contact. 74, 75 feet, and we want to find the pressure all the way down to there. And remember, it's normally pressured, so you can imagine you've got a column of water all the way down. And you know that the pressure up at the surface is 14.7 psi. So because it's normally pressured, the water pressure is the atmospheric pressure plus the water density times D minus D surface, and of course, the depth of the surface is zero. Um, you know, as a, I like to, to think about what the answer should be ahead of time. That way, if I do it, I can think about whether or not I made a big mistake in there. Um, you know, as I said before, the, the, the pressure, you know, is usually on the order, you know, if it's whatever the depth is, you, you decrease that by about a half, 50%, and that should be the, the, the um, pressure in PSI. So this was 7,500 feet, 74, 75 feet. Half of that is 3,000 something. So, you know, that's about uh, the right answer. If I had gotten 30,000 or 300, then I would be really worried. So the way I did that, as I said, that that's equal to 14.7 PSI plus 66.96 pound mass per cubic foot. times one square feet is 144 square inches. And then we do our unit convert, you know, it's just really just do the density divided by 144. There's 32 feet squared per second squared. And then there's one pound force is 32 foot pound mass per second squared. So those cancel. And then your depth is 74, 75 feet. And when I do that, I get 3490.6 PSI at the water oil contact line. Everybody see that? So given that, what's the pressure of the oil at the water oil contact line? At the water oil contact line, and only at the water oil contact line, pressure of oil at the at, is equal to the pressure of the water at the water oil contact plus the capillary entry pressure, which is 3490.6 plus 3.5. And that is equal to 34, whoop, let's see, 3494.1. PSI. Understand? So good. So the, the next part of this is to calculate the water and the oil pressure at 
70 at uh, 25 feet above that, so it's 74 50 feet. Pressure of the water should be pretty straightforward. We're going to use the same formula we did before. Pressure of the oil, we're going to have to kind of back calculate. So we're going to have to start at the oil, the water oil contact line, and and go upwards from that. So let's do, you know, at 74.50 feet. So uh, I think you got the 14.7. Yeah. And then um, if you just want to make it simple, we could put the 0.465 PSI per foot times 74.50 feet. And I got 3478.95 PSI. Is that what everyone else got? Good. Okay. Now the oil pressure is a little bit more challenging because we're not, you know, the water pressure has got this, this constant water all the way from the surface, but the oil is not like that. We've got to sort of work backwards. We started the water oil contact line and you could say that the pressure of the oil is equal to the pressure of the oil, the water oil contact line, or I could just say the pressure of the water, the water oil contact line, plus the capillary entry pressure, which is 3.5 plus POG times D minus D water oil contact. Okay, so what this says is that when D is equal to the water oil contact, PO is equal to the oil pressure of the oil water contact. But you're gonna work backwards. So uh, remember before we were starting at the surface for water and we were going down but now we're starting at the water oil contact line and going up. Does that make sense? Um, the pressure of the water, the water oil contact line was 3490.6 plus the 3.5 capillary entry pressure. Together we know that that's 3494.1 plus the density of oil was 53. We're gonna divide by 144. The depth we're looking at is 7450 feet minus the depth of the water oil contact is 7475 and I got 3484.88 PSI. So slightly different than you, it's probably just one of us using more significant figures or something somewhere in there, be my guess. Everybody understand that? So you could do this at all your depths, and that's what we'll do in the spreadsheet, is we'll just put in a formula and then drag and drop it so you could do it at all depths. So what that means is that we're going to have the water pressure and the oil pressure everywhere at all depths. And they're going to be different. So obviously at the water oil contact line, the difference in pressure was three and a half PSI. At a shallower depth, the difference in pressure, which is the, cap which is the capillary pressure, is going to be greater than 3.5. And that will change because water is more dense than oil. So as you go more shallow, the difference in pressures is going to be more significant. So the next thing I ask is to compute the phase saturations. And so let me go back to my slides. You know, so what we're doing over here, we, we already did this basically, um, is we calculated the water pressure and the oil pressure at a few different depths. The difference between those is the capillary pressure, PC. But how do we use that to find the saturations? Well, if I go over here, and I recall that I've got a capillary pressure curve. Specifically, I've got the drainage curve because this is a drainage process. Then if I know my capillary pressure, I could come across and at a given capillary pressure, I can go down and figure out what my water saturation is, right? So at every depth, I've got a different capillary pressure. And at that capillary pressure, it corresponds to a water saturation so I can calculate the, the water saturation. You can use a plot, or in our case, we have a formula. So the formula is this brooks corey model. OK. 
Okay. So capillary pressure, which is the oil pressure minus the water pressure, is equal to the capillary entry pressure, that's three and a half psi, times this SW star to the one to the minus one over lambda. Lambda is equal to two. And then SW star is given as the water saturation minus the residual water saturation divided by one minus SWR. So if we know the capillary pressure, then we can use that formula to back calculate SW star. And then once we got SW star, we know SWR, which is 0.2, we can calculate SW. So the next question is to calculate, compute the phase saturations at the water oil contact line as well as 25 feet above the water oil contact line. Okay, I'll give you a hint. You can do the calculation at the water oil contact line, but you don't need to. I know exactly what the water saturation is at the water oil contact line, but 25 feet above it, it's a little bit more complicated. So I'll give you 30 seconds to think about it. Maybe you could just tell me what the, what the phase saturation is at the water oil contact line. It's going to be 100%, so 1. So the water saturation is 100% at the water oil contact and everywhere below it. As soon as you get above the water oil contact, then you start having oil show up. So we don't even need to do the calculation there, but 25 feet above the water oil contact line, we will need to do a calculation. First thing you want to do is calculate the capillary pressure. That's straightforward because we already know the oil pressure and the water pressure. Then you can use this formula here to calculate SW star. Then you can use this formula to calculate SW. Capillary pressure is the oil pressure minus the water pressure. We know both of those things at uh, 25 feet above the water oil contact line. It's equal to the capillary entry pressure, which we know, times SW star, which we don't know, to the minus one over lambda. Now you don't have to do it this way, but I, I just put it together all in one formula. So if you solve for SW star, it's the capillary pressure, which is PO minus PW divided by the capillary entry pressure to the minus lambda, and then SW star is SW minus SWR divided by one minus SWR. So if I solve for SW, then I get SW is equal to SWR, that's 0.2 in this problem, plus one minus SWR times PO minus PW divided by PE to the minus lambda. Did anybody get, um, get an answer? I did. Yeah, what'd you get? Uh, 0.48 for SW. That's what I got too. I got 0.477. So if you put this in, and well, let me let me first stop. Um, I'm going to think to myself if that answer makes sense, and um, and it does. I mean, obviously, if it was negative or something, then you'd be really worried. But it's got to be less than one because we're above the water oil contact line, and it's got to be greater than 0.2 because it's never going to be less than the residual oil saturation, or it should, be, should say it could be got to be greater than or equal to 0.2. So here I get 
plus 1 minus 0 0.2 times my 3484.9 minus my 3478.95 divided by 3.5 to the minus 2 and I get 0.477 that's SW now if I want to know SO it would be 1 minus SW there's no gaseous phase in this problem so that's 0.523 that makes sense And you could, of course, do that at all your depths. And then you know the water saturation and the, uh, and the oil saturation at, uh, at every depth along with your water pressure and oil pressure. And then, and then you're initialized. Any questions about that? So the next question has to do with something called the free water level. Um, so I'll, well, I'll show this first. So, so this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a plot that looks something like this. At the water oil contact line and below the water oil contact line, the water saturation is 100%. But then it decreases as you go uh, farther up. And at some point, you're going to really approach your initial or residual water saturation, which is 0.2. Okay, so that is um, the irreducible water saturation, 0.2. Uh, many times in a reservoir, if you've got something that's sort of tipped, tilted at a dip angle or is more vertical, then you'll be way above the water oil contact line and most of it. So most of your reservoir will be at the residual water saturation. And it's only very near the bottom near your capillary transition zone that you'll have a, um, a saturation that's significantly greater than 0.2. So that's one of the reasons why in a lot of the problems I do in class, I assume that the initial water saturation is equal to the residual water saturation because if we're at a shallow enough depth above the water or contact line, then, then that's the case. But the, the, the next question um, I ask is about the free water level. The free water level is sort of a weird concept. It, uh, it's a more theoretical type thing. It's defined as the pressure that the water and the oil are equal to each other. And, and so as this capillary pressure shrinks, it's going to be at some depth below the water-oil contact line. Now, I say that that's sort of weird and theoretical, why is that? Because there is no oil below the water oil contact line. There is no oil at the free water level. So how could the oil and water pressures be equal to each other? Well, you know, it, it's, it's, that's why I say it's more theoretical. But what we want to do is we want to calculate that depth. So um, the last thing we'll do is set my water pressure equal to my oil pressure. And, and that's what this equation is here. So what I do is I say, well, let's find the depth in such a way that the, you know, and, and, and some of this cancels, by the way. So this pressure cancels with that pressure. Um, and you want to find D free water level in such a way that this equation on the left is equal to this equation on the right, because the water pressure is equal to the oil pressure. So maybe I'll give you a few minutes to see if you can calculate that. Dr. Bellhoff, yeah. I have a question from uh, the previous part B. Sure. Um, when it gave us lambda, what does lambda represent again? Yeah, so um, lambda is, is an empirical constant, and it would have come from doing some sort of curve fitting to your uh, data. So if you would have gotten capillary pressure data in the lab, like you learned in your petrophysics class, you would have fit that data to this equation and the lambda would give you um, the fit. Um, if I wanted to go into more detail, I could tell you that lambda has to do with the pore structure and how the pores are connected and, and all that kind of stuff. And it'll be different for different kinds of rocks. But, but the short answer is, is that it's a fitting parameter. And it's, it's uh, greater than one and usually a, 
somewhere around two. It could be bigger. It could be three or 1.5, something. Does that help? Yes, that explains okay. it. Thank you. Yeah. I'll show a slightly different equation that I had on my PowerPoint. They both work. The point is, is that the water pressure has to equal to the oil pressure and you're solving for depth. Um, now what I've just used is I've used the atmospheric pressure and, and gone down as opposed to starting at the bottom and, and going. It, it doesn't matter where you use as your reference point for water because it's a straight line all the way from the surface down to the free water level. The point is that you set those two equations equal to each other and you solve for your depth at the free water level. So a little bit of algebra. And the way I did that is I put that in um, and I solved it and I got 7711.1 feet. That's going to be below the water oil contact line. Had I gotten something more shallow than the water oil contact line, I would know that I was wrong. And had I gotten something a whole lot deeper than the water oil contact line, I probably would have been concerned. And this is only, um, what is it, about, about 35 feet below the water oil contact line. If it was hundreds or thousands of feet, then I probably think I did something wrong. I gave you a, a spreadsheet with, it's kind of sort of set up for you. Um, but, but let me show you, so what I did is I put in all my inputs here. And then I've got my depth. I got my water pressure. Okay, the water pressure is, is just the formula that we used before, but I can do it at all depths. The oil pressure. Okay, I'm going to use it, and then I've got to use the capillary entry pressure of the water oil contact line. The difference between those two is the capillary pressure. From that, I can calculate SW star using the formula. From SW star, I can calculate SO, I mean SW, and of course SO is 1 minus SW. And if we go down in my spreadsheet, you know, so I just put in those formulas and I just dragged it all the way down. So I repeated that formula, and if I go all the way down to, say, 74.50, these are the same answers that we, we got by hand. And 7,500 was the water oil contact, uh, 74.75 was the water oil contact. There the water saturation is one. And then, um, and then finally the free water level here. And so what I did is, is if you do this, the, the plot will generate for you. But here's a plot of depth on the y-axis, so it's getting deeper as you go down, versus pressure. You can see the water or the aqueous phase pressure and the oleic phase pressure. At the free water level, they're equal. At the water oil contact line, they're, the difference is the capillary entry pressure. And um, that increases as you go up. From that, we calculate the saturation. You make a plot of the water saturation, which is the blue curve. So from the free water level all the way to the water oil contact line, you got 100% water. As you go to shallower depths, the water saturation decreases quickly. If you go up high enough, it would equal to the residual water saturation, which is 0.2. The oleic phase saturation is obviously 1 minus SW. And so probably just take you 10 or 15 minutes, but, but maybe after class you want to do that and create those plots yourself.